teachers. Uh, okay, another huge ask. Up here, those two platforms, and then the altar at the back, and the tabernacle that is sitting on that altar uh, have to be moved. We move them. Our church is very gracious to let us move that, but it has to be moved back after the service tonight. So we've got to get these chairs out of the way. Um, any strong backs, male or female, we will be eternally grateful for your help. Um, that's a big, the platform is on rollers, but it is heavy as anything. Um, okay, uh, just a reminder, please silence your cell phones. You are welcome to record, to take pictures. I need you out of the aisles, please, because we do use the aisles, and we don't want you to get hit with anything. That would not be good. Uh, but you are welcome to record as long as they are on silent, okay? Um, and then our last thing before I introduce our pastor, if you do not have a church home, we would love to have you. Uh, we have a wonderful children's ministry here, a wonderful youth ministry here. We have an awesome music program here, but that's because I'm in charge. No, I'm just kidding. Uh, we, have, we have a phenomenal pastor here. Uh, we would love to have you. Uh, I think that the website has been up and you've seen all that stuff, so we invite you for that. We would love that. Pastor Harry Schenkel is our pastor, and he's going to come up and lead us in prayer and do a quick welcome. <clears throat> Connie took my whole spiel. Thanks a lot. Sorry. Jesus will be eternally grateful to you if you help us move the altar back so we can have church tomorrow night. So <laughs> let us pray. Almighty God, we are so blessed to be able to gather together with these children and the helpers and Miss Connie and her team and uh, just enjoy each other's presence and learn more about your love and share it with those around us. And I thank you for all who have been willing to participate this past week and pray that the song continues to sing in their heart, especially as we move through the summer and we move on forward. Bless us if there are anything, any needs that we have in our hearts and our minds, any struggles and burdens that we carry. Help us to find rest and peace in your presence in whatever way we call upon your name and whatever spiritual home we gather in. And as we move forward from tonight, Lord, remind us that by your grace and love, seen through the cross and the empty tomb, that you are always with us. And we pray all this in the name of Jesus. Amen. Thank you. Okay. We present to you not your average Joe.
fries, fries, and a shake shake. Business was booming, but young one bro always seemed to be missing. Hey, where's Joe? Beats me. Bet he's got his nose in a book or his head in the cloud. We do all the work, but Dad's like him best. He thinks he's something special. He thinks he's a big shot. We think he's dreaming. Has anybody, anybody seen, seen Joe? Joe? No! Wait for me. Delivery too. Sorry, I'm running. You're always running late. And so the adventure begins on an ordinary day with an ordinary delivery for a not so ordinary boy with an extraordinary dream. I said delivery. Hey, who's in charge around here? Which one of you is Papa Jake? Dad's our dad. He's at our town right now. We are our sons and daughters. This is Annette, Cubby, Sharon. I'm JD. And since Dad's gone and I'm the oldest, I'm the head honcho right now. Okay, Mr. Honcho. Hey. Honcho, honcho. I don't have a honcho on my list. Just write it in. Okay, got it. Remember, this is your last shipment of supplies for the summer, so you have to make it last. What? Please sign here and we'll be on our way. And here. And here. And, and here. here. Thanks. Thanks. Let me carry that. We'd love to for fried steaks, but we have to finish our deliveries. <laughs> Neither rain, nor snow, nor sleet, nor rain. Oh, I can never remember the rest of it. Ah, uh, whatever. See ya. That was a dinner for the diner. There are now short season and short supplies. Hey, JD, it's our last shipment, and summer is our busiest time of the year. What if we run out of food? What if we run out of napkins? What if we run out of straws? What if we run out of tacos? Hey, we're not your average diner. What if we run out of cooks? It's almost noon, and I haven't heard a peep from Joe. Where's Joe? Joe! Joe! Hey, Joe! Yeah. I have got to get me a nicer sounding alarm clock. Wake up, you've been sleeping on the job again. I can't help it, JD. I tried to get a good, I tried to get a good night's sleep, but God keeps sending me these dreams. Like the one I had last night. Here we go again. Oh, come, um, wait. This one was the biggest dream of all. It was in Cinemascope and Technicolor and 3D. Woo! There was a sun and a moon and one, two, three, four, eleven stars. And they're all bowing down to me. Ta-da! And what did God tell you this dream meant, Joe? That you'd be the boss of us? Are we supposed to bow down to you? In your dreams, what do you think Dad would say? Delivery, delivery. We have another delivery for you. This one's from your dad. I mean, Papa Jake. This letter is addressed to the head honcho, which would be you. Hey, Mr. Postman, look and see. Is there a letter in your bag? For me? Nope, just a, par just a parcel for Master Joe. Master? Sorry, fellas, we don't address them. We just deliver them. Neither rain, nor, nor snow, nor, snow, nor sleet, nor, nor rain. Yeah, 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 we heard you before. Okay then, see you next time. Have a great day. Joe was only concerned with the box, but the letter was about to rock and roll JD's world. Dad says that he'll be away all summer. He says he's opening up a Papa Jake's West. He's put Joe in charge here at home. In honor of his promotion, he's given him Dad's prize leather jacket out of sight. No! 
Oh! oh. The, that's the last straw. He thinks he's a big deal. We've got to do something about Joe. He's the only one with a colorful cup out of all 12 sons. We connect to the Lord above. He's not your average Joe. Turn your microphone away. Uh, Congratulations can be so exhausting. I think I need a nap before lunch. Just then, a big change arrived in a woody wagon. Bonsai Beach Buddies. We're on a safari, dude. Hey, man, we're heading to Pharaoh's Point. Right now, we need some sustenance. My hunger's off the Richter scale. What? You got that coil as the rumbles. Unfortunately, we only have fries and shakes left. Gnarly. We'll take a dozen. Each. JD, we hardly have enough food as it is. They'll ruin us. No, they'll help us. I have an idea. Excuse me, but who are you? My name's Hot Dog, but my friends call me Hot Dog. All right, Mr. <laughs> dog. <laughs> dog, I'll offer you a special deal today. All your fries and shakes for free. Now you're cooking with gas. Cowabunga. All in exchange for <laughs> giving the dream over there when we ride the Pharaoh's Point. Um, mm, okay, that seems fair. Hey, Wipeout, you and Bob tie Snoozin' Boy here to the top of the woody wagon with the other surfboards. But first, I'll take that jacket. Here. 
Here you are, bro. You won't need that where he's going. Pharaoh's point or bus? Bonsai Beach Buddies. Ride with us to Pharaoh's Point. What's a Pharaoh's Point? Well, up there is a lot of sun, down there is a lot of sand, and out there is a lot of water. And that's about it. It's called a beach. But where's the diner? Where are my brothers and sisters? Where's my jacket? They're all Splitsville, man. Looks like your relations wanted to send you on a permanent vacation. So mellow out, dude. You might learn how to like it here. Hang loose and hang ten, bro. Aloha, Joe! Excuse me, have we met before? He's so dreamy. <laughs> <laughs> if this is another dream, somebody else is going to have to explain it to me. Marhaba! Marhaba! What? Marhaba, that's Egyptian for welcome. Uh, thank you? I'm Cleopatra, and I oversee the various shopkeepers on the beach. That's us! We're delighted to have you at Pharaoh's Point. We love having visitors. You must have traveled a great distance. You don't look like you're from around here. We don't find many people on the beach just like that. This will never work. You, sir, need to be beachified. Oh, I love makeovers. All right, girls, let's get to work. Time to lose those loafers. This will add some dazzle. You'll want to apply some sunscreen, and you'll fit in wearing this. It's pretty bright here at Pharaoh's Point. You need some shades. And to top it all off, of course you'll need a hat. <laughs> all right, you're all set for Pharaoh's Point. Good work, ladies. Time to get your shops ready for the day. In this heat, I'm sure I'll sell a lot of snow cones. Back off, out of the way, major delivery coming through. You, out of the way. All right, I paid extra for overnight. You, out of the way, move. We're gonna do this in an orderly fashion. You know how we operate. Neither rain, nor snow, nor sleet, nor hail. Hey, that's our line. So what did you bring us today? I've got your snow supply right here. I've been waiting forever for my stuff. I hope it's not melted like the last time. Oops, sorry. I guess I'll be snowing, selling drinks again this year. Sand? Who ordered sand? Oh, that would be me. You ordered sand? Yeah, I, re I need to replenish the beach. True that. Everyone keeps wearing it home when they leave. It's always good to be prepared. I guess you can never have too much sand at the beach. There's nothing for you. 
And just when Joe felt like no one in the world could ever feel as bad as he did, he met someone who felt worse. Get your ice cold drinks, best liquid refreshments on the beach, right here at the walk-in watering hole. Perfect, I'm parched. Hey, over here, I'll take one. At your service, what would you like? How about great knee high? Don't carry it. Bubble up? Nope. RC double cola? Sorry, but this is what I do have. This? This is a plastic bottle of water. It's 1959, who in their right mind is gonna buy bottled water? No. <laughs> No one, apparently. Business has been a bit slow. I'm sorry, here's your water bag. Maybe it'll catch on one day. Rock Cupid, I have plenty, and I'll probably just end up giving them away. That's lucky for me. I don't have any money. I'm Joe, by the way. Confused and lost. Nice to meet you, Joe. I'm Aquafina. Broke and stuck. <laughs> Looks like we both need some sense of direction. Yeah, I know I want to help people. I'm just not sure how to go about it. I'm sure God has a plan for me. I just haven't figured it out yet. I know what you mean. My dad always said we have to trust God with the future. He's always at work, even when we can't see what he's up to. Your dad sounds like a really smart man. He is. I sure wish he was here right now. I could use his advice. I've got so many questions.
That includes you. The great Kahuna? His real name is Melvin, <laughs> but <laughs> never call him that to his face. What does he do? He pretty much just runs the beach. Just do whatever he says. The great Kahuna will now question the stranger with cheap lace and a puzzled expression. I think he means you. Oh, um, I'm honored to meet you, Mr. Uh, Kahuna. Please, you may call me great. Thank you, uh, great. And you can call me Joe. So, Joe, how did you get on my beach? How long have you been here? How long will you stay? When will you leave? I don't know. I really don't. So, Joe, it appears you don't know much about anything, do you, Joe? Well, my friend Aquafina and I were just trying to, we're just talking about that. We're trying to trust God with all the things we don't know. Oh, him? There's no need for God on this beach. After all, we have me, Captain Shuby! I charge this young, confused man to your care. Find him the job that will give him some sense of direction. I would do my best, sir. Joe, this is my deputy, Captain Shuby. My assistants, they'll show you the ropes. Good luck, even with your god, you'll need it. Wow, Aquafina, imagine. I've been here less than a day, and I already have a job. Don't get too excited, Joe. Kahuna doesn't treat his workers very well. A lot of them say they feel like slaves. Well, that won't be me. See, I'm going to be the best worker they've ever seen. So, Joe, what can you do? I've been, hmm, I've been told I interpret dreams really well. Me, 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 me. Oh, that's useful. Well, not, since we don't seem to have any openings for dream and her that seems to be useless. Is, is. You'll be assigned a different position. Like what, will I be a VP <laughs> CEO? No. Your TF. What's a TF? Powerful. And so Joe began the most menial of jobs, but he was always grateful for his new digs in this strange place. He even started each day by thanking God. Interpret our dreams for us. Sometime later, 
Take two vendors from the beach to squeeze Kahuna, the hot dog baker and the snow cone cup beer. They were both thrown in jail while there, they both had dreams. Joe predicted a good outcome for the cup bear, but for the baker, not so much. And soon news of Joe's abilities reached Kahuna and he sent for him. The Great Kahuna wants to see you right now! The sun was not shining quite so brightly over Ferris Point anymore. As summer was ending, clouds were gathering and Elmon had begun to blow. Kahuna has spent, met, has spent many fitful nights haunted by his dreams, and so he summoned Joe to ask for help. It had been many months since Joe stood before the great Kahuna, needing a job and a place to stay, but now Kahuna needed something from Joe. Joe, everybody says when you hear a dream you can interpret it. Is that so? Actually, that's not true. It's not who lied to the great Kahuna! <laughs> no, God is the one who interprets the dreams, not me. God reveals what they mean. I see. It appears there is a need for God on this beach after all. And now I will tell you about my dream. And so Kahuna shared his dream with Joe. The dream was indeed strange and perplexing. Every creature on the beach was starving, and none of the coconut trees had coconuts. And God revealed to Joe what that meant. The time for fun and sun may only be for a season, and it's drawing close. Can't you hear the, thun the thunder in the distance? A storm is on the way, and it will cause much destruction, not only on the beach, but throughout the mainland. Food and water will be in short supply. What can we do? We must begin pr to prepare, immediately. And so we will. Captain Shumi, gather everyone together. And you, Joe, I'm promoting you to lifeguard. You will direct the operation. And now, where is that girl who sells the oddly contained water? Aquafina's walking water and hole at your service, your kahuna ship. Good. You'll be in charge of the food and water stations. After the storm has passed, they'll be in great demand. I knew God had a plan for me. You picked the right job. You picked the right, You're right, you picked the right girl for that job, sir. Attention everyone, it's time to stock up and hunker down. Captain Shuby, sound the alarm. And so the storm descended on the once sunny beach. But with Joe giving directions, they knew they'd find our way to safety. Joe, do you think we're gonna make it? My dad always said God is closest when the hour is darkest. Then God must be right here beside us. That's a promise, and it's a keeper. The storm had ended and the sun rose and so did everyone's hope. And slowly they began to rebuild the community, not on sifting sand, but on solid rock.
The beach community never felt more like a, well, a community. They found out the harsher the winds, the stronger they stood together. Gidget, Leonie, and Sunshine helped organize the clothing cabana. Hot Dog and Mr. Snowcone run food pantry. And Aquafina couldn't keep enough bottled water in stock. Even Captain Shuby and Kahuna helped out. So, Shuby, what are we supposed to do with all these towels? We're supposed to fold them, sir. We're supposed to fold them. And directing them all was Joe. He was more than just a lifeguard on the beach. Now people on the mainland were hearing about there was food and supplies at the beach because of Joe. Everyone called him Governor. Hey, hey Governor. Governor! Quite a change from the dreamer from the drive-in. In fact, he had a hard time even remembering that former life until one day that former life arrived back on, back on a bunch of choppers. It was the crew from Papa Jake's Fries and Shakes, and they were hungry. Hello, and welcome to Ferris Point. It seems you have traveled a great distance. Yes, we have. Uh, we came from up north. The, we, these are my brothers and sisters. Oh, we heard you had supplies to share and we're real hungry. We do. Who? Who? If you would just talk to our Gavna, her right over there. Here, he can get you all situated. Now Joe was seated up high on the lifeguard tower, and as soon as he saw his brothers and sisters, he recognized them. But he didn't know it was Joe. He was tan, his clothes were different, and the sun was in their eyes. But Joe came down from a lifeguard stand to talk to them. I see you have traveled a great distance. Have you come to find food? Yes, Governor. We had little food to spare before, and now it's completely gone. We've had a drive-in restaurant up north, but the storm completely destroyed it. I'm sorry, was anyone hurt? No, everyone made it out in time. We heard that somehow you knew the storm would come and you saved many supplies. We were hoping we would buy some. Oh no, sir, our food, it's not for sale, it's free. Free? Uh, this is my assistant, Aquafina. She's in charge of the food and water station. I'm pleased to meet you. I'm afraid we may not have any extra food at this time. Uh, Governor, what are you saying? Aquafina and I will have to check the inventory. Please come back in the morning and we'll give you our decision. We understand. Thank you, sir. We'll see you then. That was a turn of events Joe did not expect. He was deeply surprised to see his family after so much time, and even more surprised at how it made him feel. Joe, why did you say that? We have more than enough food, and we have pledged to help any stranger in need. They aren't strangers, Aquafina. They are my brothers and sisters. Your brothers and sisters? You told me that they, that they never wanted to see you again, that they, they never wanted to see you again, and they sent you here while your father was out of town. That's all true, but that was a long time ago when the summer first started. They seem to have changed. They didn't recognize you. No, they didn't. I, I'm sure I have changed as well. What are you going to do, Joe? I don't know. The sun is just set. Maybe I'll just sit on the beach for a while and count the stars. You know, counting stars might be easier on top of your tower. No, I think I can see God a lot more clearly down here. But you're on your knees. Exactly. I've been praying. I'm starting to realize that even though my brothers and sisters did something terrible to me, God must have wanted to use it for good. You're right, Joe. God did have a plan for you and your family. He brought you here so you could provide them and us with food and save all of our lives. I think you know what God wants you to say to your family, Joe. Yes, I do know. God has forgiven all the wrong things that I've done. That makes me want to forgive my brothers and sisters. They are the ones who brought you here, but it was God at work all along. And I can see that he is at work in you too, helping you forgive.
And so Joe and Aquafina prayed throughout the night, and as a new day dawned over the beach, Joe knew what he had to do. Many had come in that morning to ask for food. Groups of friends, several families, and an older man who had come asking food for an entire village up north. But they waited patiently as J.D. and his siblings once stood again before the governor. Request. I had to take stock of many things last night, but our storehouse is full, overflowing actually, and so we're happy to give you anything, so I'm happy to give you anything you need. Yay! 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 Thank you, sir. We'll spread the news that the governor is the most kindest ruler in the land. No, JD. I'm not who you think I am. I'm not a ruler. I'm not even from this beach. You're not? I'm Joe, your brother, the one you sent to the one you sent to Ferris Point so many months ago. I don't believe it. Oh Joe, please forgive us. We all wondered what happened to you. JD said it would teach you a lesson. I've learned many lessons. JD? Yes. Please stand, my brother. Come close to me. And Joe descended from his tower and approached his family that he had not seen for so long. They were terrified, but Joe's words were full of love and kindness. It was God who sent me here to save lives, the lives of the people on the beach, people on the mainland, and especially your lives. Remember how great grandpa Abe used to say that the whole world was going to be blessed through our family? I do. Please forgive us, Joe. What we did was very wrong. Yes, your actions were meant to hurt, but God meant them for good. And now, tell, tell me about our father. Is he still living? Did he survive the storm? Indeed he did. Yay! Yay! Cowabunga! What? I don't understand. What does that mean? Oh, sorry. That's surfer speak for really great news. Cowabunga! The man who had come to ask for food for an entire village was none other than Papa Jake himself. Papa, we didn't know what happened to you. When I finally got back after the storm, the restaurant was gone to the view. I prayed that you found some safe place to stay. And everyone told me about this beach, and a very wise man who understood dreams and stored up food and whoever came to him was saved. No, Papa, it was God who it was God who interpreted the dreams. It was God who told us to store up food, and it was God who saved lives. God has been with me all this time, just like you said he was also with you. Yes, and he brought us together again. Yay! Yay! Papa Jake, I welcome you and your very interesting family to my beach. Joe, who is that? His name's Melvin, but never call him that to his face. Right, Melvin? I think you should load up what's left of your fries and shakes and move here. You can rebuild next to my hut. Papa Jake's fries and shakes south. Your fit whole family is invited to live on the best part of the beach and enjoy plenty of fun in the sun. Cowabunga! You see what happens when we trust God with the future? Yep, he's always at work, even when we can't see what he's up to. I couldn't have said that better myself. The story is far from over. For Joe, this is a preview for a great son that would one day be born into his family. His name is Jesus. And like Joseph, he was loved by his father, hated by his brothers, and surrounded by evil people who intended to harm him. He was nailed to the cross, but like God intended Joseph's suffering for good, God intended Jesus' suffering to accomplish the greatest good of all time, our salvation. Some days are always sunny and those days 
are harder than others And those days sometimes we can wonder If it ends this way, are we gonna be alright? Just a quick reminder before Pastor Shankel comes. Lost and Found is out there. There is a fellowship and we need strong backs. Join me one more time. I'll get there. Join me one more time in thanking the children for all their hard work.
And of course, none of this is possible without Miss Connie. And her team. If she, if she hasn't already, next week she'll start planning next year's music camp. It's a full year of work that goes into this. So words cannot express how deeply we appreciate everything you do for us, but especially for this week. I know you're going away next week and it's well deserved. It's kind of half work, half vacation, and uh, Lord knows you need it after this week, right? All right. You guys get to take your hats home. You're gonna lead your families over to the fellowship hall. There's lots of good stuff there. And anyone who can help us move some stuff around, that would be greatly appreciated. Thank you again, have a great summer.